No, oh, well, you should you should download the. F ah! Good God! Don't stand so close to me. Don't stand. Don't stand so. Don't stand so close to me. Oh, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> don't stand so. Don't, don't stand so. Don't stand so close to me. <laughs> Fuck you, Russell. You don't have the balls. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> The NCR is offering a bounty of 500 caps for the capture of Fourfinger John, me, Fourfinger John Alvord. I am wanted for armed robbery, amongst other felonies. I was last sighted near Mole Rat Ranch. Mole Rat Ranch, accompanied by multiple gang members. I am to be considered armed and dangerous and should only be pursued by armed professionals or women with big fake tits. I don't take requests from scumbags, John. Wow, way to call me a used condom. No, that's what scumbag means. If you call someone a scumbag, you're calling them a used condom. Uh, is scum another term for semen? No, but scumbag is a common euphemism for a condom. Well, if the condom is the bag part, then I guess the scum would be the semen. Scum! Subject name, Avlord John. Alias, Four Finger John. Date of birth, 2250 Charlie. Allegiance, independent outlaw, head of the Avlord gang. Poster location, it's in a saloon somewhere. All offenses prior to NCR occupation are undocumented. Armed robbery, 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 bounty five hundred dollars and alive, one hundred dead. Four fingered John is easily the most proficient outlaw in the Mojave, having single handedly deprived the Crimson Caravan and other agencies of an estimated $250,000 caps in robberies, loss of revenue, and other damages in the course of his career. Avlord takes great pains to avoid bloodshed while engaging in robberies, even using non lethal weapons to neutralize guards and merchants. Hmm. He's assisted by a gang estimated to be at least a dozen strong, all heavily armed and loyal to Avlord. He operates primarily in the vicinity of Molrat Ranch and Field Shack often retreating to the mountains north of New Vegas if the NCR dispatches troops to apprehend him. While Avlord's initial instinct is probably a dialogue, he will not hesitate to use lethal force if cornered. He and his men are suspected of killing at least three different bounty hunters, all in a set ambush. Avlord has survived in the Mojave due to his capacity for surprise and the fact that he cut off one of his fingers and turned it into Randall to convince him that he was dead. Mmm, clever man. Randall was nearsighted, so he didn't recognize him. Yeah. The root of Avlord's alias is unknown, as he's reported to possess all nine fingers. While data prior to 2274 is scant, Avlord is be believed to have served time in a local jail, perhaps prim. I'm just gonna shoot him in the face. Wait, we're not gonna get as many caps, and they might have fun things to teach us. We are already flush with money. You are so lame. I just want to kill everybody. You are so lame! Everyone in the Mojave must die for their transgressions! Lame! You're lame. What is this building? I don't recall. Well, I'm gonna go check more right ranch first. Uh, well, I'm curious. Hold on. What is this place? Uh, it's a. D oh, that's <laughs> it's the old orphanage. We don't know anything about that <laughs> building. We found it that way. Uh oh. Three landmines strapped to a. Is that the bomb from Counter Strike? <laughs> bomb has been planted. Around the block, I'm pushing the baby carriage. I pushed the bomb carriage in the early month of May. I don't know that one. And if you ask me why the hell I pushed it, I pushed it for that long marine so far, far away. Oh, God, that cadence. Far away. Shut up. Far away. Shut up. <laughs> I fucking hate that I'm cadence honest. and everything about it. <laughs> hey, do you Come mind? Are, are you guys looking for adopt? Oh, polygamous family here. <laughs> Why are you using that thing? Because it's a frying pan with a torch on it! Variety is the spice of life. Let's leave. <laughs> I don't want to be in here anymore. Now that we've killed these potential adopters, yes! Uh, we're not here to investigate the orphanage that's been abandoned for years. We're looking for for a bounty, yes. Four-fingered... Four-fingered fart knocker. <laughs> yeah. Where is he hiding? I'm curious. Come out, come out. We're oh! Hold it right there, fuck nuts. You're a fuck nuts! Don't take another step. Do you have any idea who I am? What the hell are you doing here? Explain yourself. If you had any goddamn sense, you'd have shot first and talked later. Well, I guess we're not getting him alive, are we, huh? Yeah, we are. Hey. How? You. you Whoa! Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, cow, cow, cow! Ah, his attack cow is hitting us! You got Man, nothing. I am loving all three of these frames per second. <laughs> 
Wow, we are having all kinds of problems right now. There he is! Albert! Watch out! Hold still Watch for a out, second. That stinks. Oh wait, were we supposed to take him alive? That was the idea, yes! Ah shoot. The hello, what's this? Watch out! An Uzi? An Uzi? Whoa. Oh, you have an Uzi now, huh? That looks like an Uzi to me. Israeli military industries Uzi. Watch out. Uzi is one of the better submachine guns. A lot of different militaries actually ended up adopting it. I think the US had it for a while. Have you which... fired an Uzi before? I have. D did you enjoy the experience? It's all right. When I hear submachine gun, I think at least 50 rounds in the clip. Oh, no, 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 no. Submachine guns are... Hello? He was stunned by your sudden appearance. The sub in submachine gun is actually indicative of the caliber. Sub-caliber weapon, so it's mm. smaller than rifle caliber. Oh! Speaking of submachine guns that were available around the same time, I just found a Sten gun. My name's Stan, here's my gun. So this is one of the other... <laughs> This is one of the other submachine guns that was widely available around the time of the Uzi. Is the magazine in there sideways? Yes, it is. The magazine pokes out of the side. It's not a handguard. It's not a thing you're supposed to grip. Um, most soldiers would just hold on to the magazine well. Yeah! Got it. The only submachine guns that were, again, widely available were things like the MP-18 and the Thompson submachine gun. Submachine guns that were quite large, pretty dang heavy and expensive to manufacture because it required a lot of machining. The Sten gun, by comparison, is made basically out of a tube with a couple <laughs> holes cut into it, a barrel, and then pressed pieces of sheet metal. It's basically a pipe gun. At the time they were making these things, they could probably knock out about five of them in an hour. Nice! They could just slam these things together incredibly fast. The only complaint people had about them is there, if you're carrying one on a sling, there's really no good way to carry it. The sights bang into your stomach. And also, it doesn't want to sit like that, so it keeps trying to roll over. Mm -hmm. If you carry it the other direction, the charging handle slams into your stomach. And if you carry it with the magazine pointing up, the trigger jams into your stomach. So there's no good way to carry this submachine gun. And that's why it fell out of service and was replaced by the M16. No, it fell out of service because machine guns like the Uzi started coming about. And while this thing is a really good, incredibly cheap submachine gun that you can knock out thousands of them very quickly, it isn't that accurate. You can still find these things damn near everywhere. I found tons of them when I was in Iraq. Ones that were built in like the 40s and still were being used. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. I had one that was turned into me that had a built-in suppressor. Built? How do you make a built-in suppressor? Uh... Basically, you drill a bunch of holes in the barrel and you add a suppressor to the end of it. I had one that had been camouflage painted, had an integral suppressor, and somebody had bolted a rail to the top and attached a laser sight to it. A and laser were... sight on a, on a pistol that's 80 years old. Yeah, on a submachine gun. When, when you were taking inventory of these weapons, did you have to mark down details like that on the notes page? Nope, I just remembered that. And they actually made, I think, four or five different stocks. What stock? It looks like someone jammed a hanger in there. Yeah, it's pretty much just a piece of wire. It was made to be cheap. Like yeah. I said, this gun was made to be cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Task accomplished, it's I guess. It's an incredibly simple, cheap gun that was designed to arm Britain soldiers with some type of submachine gun <laughs> that didn't cost... At the time, one Thompson submachine gun cost as much as about ten of these. This is a really good option. It would be a better option if it were more accurate. Doesn't really matter. Submachine guns are designed to be used at about 50 yards, and that's it. They have spray and pray guns. Pretty much. I have shot both a Sten gun and an Uzi. If I, if I was going to be armed with one of these two submachine guns, I think I'd probably take the Sten gun. You said that the Sten gun had only 40 moving parts, roughly, right? It's well, like 40 parts total. There's barely any. That sounds like easy maintenance to me. Yeah, it's incredibly easy to maintain... No joke, if the recoil spring breaks on a Sten gun, you probably can go find a screen door and rip the spring off of that and shove it into the gun and it'll work. Didn't you do that? You took a pencil spring or something? I put like a mechanical pen spring in a Walther <laughs> P38. <laughs> and it worked just as good, huh? Yeah, it worked fine. <laughs> yeah, that'll hold it over until I can get a new spring. It's really good at filling the enemies with hot lead! <laughs> ah! Ooh! Ooh! Ooh, what you got? What you got here? 
What you got? You let me turn you over and take a look at this thing. An L96A1? Are you fucking kidding me? Never heard of that one. L96A1. <laughs> That's got a nice scope on it, I see. <laughs> yes, it does have a nice scope on it. Most people are going to know this thing as the Accuracy International Op. Most people wouldn't recognize it in this kind of view, but yes. Oh, hello. Okay, just going to use this gun on him. Well, they were hostile. <laughs> they didn't seem hostile until you shot them in the throat. Wow, well, I suck with sniper rifles. There you there go. There you go. You like that? <sighs> what? Is there a... There's another one. <laughs> oh, he's got an op too. This is going to go right in your ear. <laughs> You waste them! Yeah! Accuracy International, the company that designed this rifle, mm. was effectively three guys in a shed. <laughs> and they were like, why don't we submit this rifle that we built to the British military rifle trials for a new sniper <laughs> rifle? So they did it. They didn't expect to win. It won handily. And they were like, oh, crap. Now we got to build a bunch of these things. <laughs> so when the British military sent some requisitions lieutenants out to their shop. <laughs> to his garage. They rented a large shop. And then took their entire inventory of rifles they had produced up until that point. And there's only three people that worked for this company at the time. <laughs> so when the requisitions officers showed up, they were like, well, where is everybody? Oh, they're out to lunch. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> Why are we in a two-stall garage? The rest of the house is out for lunch, too. It'll be back in a moment. Well, no, they had rented out for a day an actual <laughs> workshop. Put, had all these workbenches in it. Put all the rifles on it in different states. So they showed up and the requisitions officers were happy. They're like, hey, this looks like a really good operation you guys got going here. Let's go out to lunch. So they went out and got lunch. And then while they were out at lunch, the requisitions officers were like, yeah, this was really more of a formality. We just wanted to make sure you weren't three guys in a shed. And they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we're in so much trouble. <laughs> anyway, it ended up getting adopted. And it's a really, really good rifle. <laughs> oh jeez, hang on a second. What? We don't, we, okay, we don't need to kill these guys. Oh, no, We've already taken the finger. Okay, doesn't sound friendly. He's, he's scared of. He's scared of you. He's running away. What's wrong with his leg? Hey, buddy, what's wrong with your leg? Somebody shot it recently. Please stop. Please stop. It hurts. Oh god. Oh god. Oh my other leg. My good leg. No. My the bandaged one was the good one. <laughs> oh, my track career is over. Oh, he had a different gun too. <laughs> Have you fired one of these guns? I have fired one of these guns. Come on! Really? If it's any World War II gun, they were probably all over the place in Iraq. So it's the, the PPSH-41. It's a Russian submachine gun. For your job, did you have to know the nomenclature of all these weapons? No, I just really like researching gun history. <laughs> you, you could have just marked down on a form, got a gun. I wasn't even supposed to get these guns. They kept bringing them to me. <laughs> I thought, wait, I thought that was part of your official job. No. You were taking inventory of these weaponry. No. Technically, anytime they confiscated weapons, they were supposed to bring them to S2, the intelligence people, so they could see where these guns came from and how potentially they had gotten them. You, were, you weren't S2. I was not S2. I was small arms repair. And for some reason, the infantry would go, hmm, we found a weird gun. Let's bring it to Zach. He fixes guns. He'll know what to do with it. So they would bring it to me and they would go, yeah, we're not sure what we're supposed to do with this. And I would say... Yes, I take it. <laughs> and I would just take it. They probably assumed you were turning it in S2 or whatever you were supposed to be doing with it. Did you eventually turn these guns in S2? Or did you hoard them like a dragon on a mountain of gold? Eventually I turned them into S2, but only after I was made to do it. <laughs> so yes, for the longest time I did just hoard them like I was a dragon on top of a mountain of gold. I was a gun dragon. Why did you do this? How many, how many guns did they make you turn in at one time? Well, it was at least four cardboard boxes. <laughs> Now, when you say cardboard boxes, you're not talking about pizza boxes. No, I'm talking about refrigerator boxes. <laughs> At one point. Why did your company have four refrigerator boxes in the desert? There were boxes that engine parts for, like, Humvees <laughs> came in. At one point in my shop, I had four AK-47s, three PPSH-41s, uh, at least 10 or 11 different pistols, an RPG-7, a PKM, an RPD... Um, an M16 that I don't know where it came from. Five golden rings. Four Mark 23s. <laughs> three French famases. Two <laughs> turtle grenades. <laughs> turtle grenades. <laughs> These guns we've been picking up that you've been spouting about, they were all used by the Allies in World War II? 
Uh, yes. So far, we have not found any German World War II submachine guns, which would be the MP38. I think it's going to be the only one. Wait, is that the only weapon the Nazis had? Wait, no, what? no, they had tons of other ones. Just the MP38 is like the only submachine gun they technically uh, had. Okay. This one does eject all the shell casings out of the top of it. Shoots them up? Yeah, shell casings just pop straight out the top of it. Into your line of sight? Uh, you don't really notice them when you're shooting it. You do notice them when they come raining back down from the sky and go down the shirt collar. Yeah, seems like a terrible design. You say people like these guns. That's one of the primary <laughs> downsides of it is that that happens. People would take these guns, fire them sideways gangsta style, and then shoot their comrades with the shrapnel. You're actually not wrong because one of the standard practices for these things was to hold it at 25 or 45 degree angle. Well, yeah, if in you your shoulder, if, so it goes and spits the shell casings. If you away. designed the sh the shell casings to eject straight up, then it just makes sense. Well, the reason they eject, they have it eject the shell casings straight up is because it's an ease of manufacturing. Hey, should we manufacture a gun that doesn't shoot hot shell casings down the soldiers' backs? We could, but this is so much cheaper. I'd like to collect a reward for a bounty. Jesus, you're a bloodthirsty one, aren't you? Well, uh, I'm disappointed, but a deal's a deal. Here's the reward. And a bit of advice. Try talking to the target before you start blasting away, okay? 